special contrast, notebook information, arthrogram, hip, knee, and shoulder, and hysterosalpingogram. This is a lot of information all in one place. This is your hip arthrogram. You want to make sure you have your history um, and consent forms, your pause for calls or timeout, and your medication order for your doctor and patient. The purpose of this exam is to demonstrate and assess the joint plus the associated soft tissue structures for pathologic processes. Contraindications are if the patient is known to be allergic to the iodine-based contrast media and or local anesthetic. Clinical indications include pain, swelling, degenerative de joint disease, pathology, trauma, persistent pain, limited movement, any of the conditions, dislocation, joint, capsule tear, ligament tear, meniscus tear, or rotator cuff tear. Procedure, you wanna gather medications. You may need to get from the PIXIS from the RN and or outpatient pharmacy, inpatient pharmacy, however your um, site requires. You'll use a towel to, and then some extra sheets maybe to cover your patient if needed. Your patient will be supine on the floor or the table um, I would probably add the flipboard. Your doctor will mark the correct hip, um, and then you will need to clean with a chloroprep or iodine, and then drape your patient with a sterile drape. The rheology tech will move the towel um, in place, the area of interest in the center of the fluoro tower, so you'll center it up. Use the foot pedal to fluoro as needed. The doctor will be positioning the needles and injecting the contrast. They will be sterile. So usually you may be um, doing everything else with the fluoro tower. If not, sometimes they ask you for a drape and they drape part of the tower. Post vitals should be taken when finished. Needle process. Um, when the site is prepped, draped, and anesthetized, the physician introduces the needle into the joint space. They site prepare the site, they anesthetize the skin, they aspirate fluid, and then they inject contrast into the area. A 25 gauge needle is usually used to drain the fluid. If the fluid looks normal, it's like a clear or yellow tint, um, it's usually discarded. However, if the fluid is cloudy, it's usually sent for analysis. So you may wanna have a um, lab form or microbiology order um, ready just in case with a specimen bag. All right, so supplies, arthrogram tray. The arthrogram trays that I have um, consists of sterile drape, penetrated drape, four by four gauze pads, usually five, a band-aid for when you're done, a 20 gauge spinal needle, extension tubing, sterile marking pen, 20 inch or 20 cc syringe, two 10 cc syringes, 18 and 22 gauge needles. Additionally, you're going to need a bottle of contrast. Um, we at our facility use Omni, um, depends on your facility. Uh, sterile gloves for the physician, chloroprep and or whatever you use to uh, anesthetize the area, a blunt tip fill needle, 25 gauge needle and one 10 cc syringe. <clears throat> so you're going to use a 20 cc syringe and one tip fill needle straw contrast from your 50 bottle milliliter bottle of Omni. Your three 10 cc syringes, one will be for Kenalog, one will be for Marcane, and one will be for Lidocaine. Your 18 gauge hypo needle, your 22 gauge hypo needle, and your 25 gauge hypo needle will be attached to those syringes for this procedure. This will vary with each doctor. This is an example of a doctor's routine that I use. Two syringes, 40 milligrams each of Kenalog, one 10 cc syringe of lidocaine, and one 10 cc syringe of marcaine is used in this particular case. All right, so discharge instructions. Make sure you're, you're explained to your patient the, um, it is important to drink lots of fluids. It'll help get rid of the dye when you urinate. The more you drink, the faster this will happen. Um, keep the injection site clean and dry for at least 24 hours. 
um, remind the patient they have had anesthesia. This means he or she may not be feeling joint pain currently. However, it should wear off in one to six hours. So uh, the pain they felt before, plus maybe a little agitation from today's um, events might make it slightly worse for a short time. Try to rest the joint that they had injected for as much as possible for 24 hours, and then you may ice the area. Here is an example of the products that I was saying you might use in your tray. Some other supplies would be the spinal needle, extra lidocaine, and maybe your microbiology lab order if needed. Arthrogram of the knee. Again, you'll need your history, consent, form, your pause for cause or timeout, your medication order. <clears throat> All right, so clinical indications, when tears of the joint capsules, menisci, or ligaments are suspected, the knee is subject to stress, especially during sports activities, pathological processes that occur during trauma, example of non-traumatic pathologic process that may indicate um, an arthrogram is a Baker's cyst, which communicates with the joint capsule in the popliteal area. The main interest of the knee, your joint capsule, your menisci, your collateral ligament, your cruciate ligaments, and other minor ligaments. So the procedure, your patient will be lying prone in the prone position. You're going to call your radiologist or PA, paralyze the area, add drapes to localize the area of interest, and cover the fluoro tube or tower with sterile drapes. The doctor may manipulate the knee, then inject lidocaine to numb the area. Then the doctor will inject contrast um, to check the location to determine whether the person has been penetrated. After injection of the contrast, the doctor will take a series of images with fluoro and may ask for some radiographs, AP and lateral. The doctor will manip manipulate the knee, um, possibly again after the injection, and here are two really good pictures of the anatomy. A shoulder arthrogram. Here again, you're going to need your history, consent form, your possible cause or timeout, and your medication order. Um, the purpose of the arthrogram of the shoulder uses single contrast or double contrast um, in the injection to demonstrate the joint capsule rotator cuff formed by conjoined tendons and four major shoulder muscles long tendon of the bicep muscle, and articular cartilage. Your clinical indication is shoulder arthrogram is indicated when the patient is present with chronic pain or general weakness when tears in the rotator cuff are suspected. Your procedure, the patient is going to be supine. You'll call your doctor, sterilize the area, add your drapes um, to your area of interest and the floor tower. The patient should have localized and marked with a sterile marker. The doctor will manipulate the shoulder and some AP projections could use would be internal and external. Um, sometimes the, the glenoid fossa, which is your um, grashy, and sometimes they'll do a transaxillary or intertubular groove or sulcus image. The doctor then will inject lidocaine to numb the area, and then they will inject contrast to ensure location to determine whether the bursa has been penetrated. After injection of the contrast, um, they are usually sent for MRI and prescribed some pain medication occasionally. The doctor may manipulate the shoulder after the injection for evaluation. Um, again, our suggested positioning will be your scalp internal, external, your your um, grashy, the transaxillary, or intertubular groove. The main interest of the shoulder is the joint capsule, rotator cuff, long tendon of the bicep muscle, and articular cartilage. Here is a great image of some of the anatomy and demonstrating um, a single contrast procedure is about 10 to 12 milliliters of positive contrast media. A dual contrast procedure consists of three to four milliliters of positive contrast media and 10 to 12 milliliters of negative contrast media, which would be room air. 
hysterosalpingogram. Hysterosalpingogram, you want to start with your history and consent forms, your pause for cause or timeout, um, your equipment sheet, your pre and your post count. Your purpose is the patency of uterine tubes, vi um, visualize uterus, urine, uterine tubes, abnormalities, and the short stents. Um, contraindications, if the patient is known to be allergic to the iodine-based contrast, if they could be pregnant, active uterine bleeding, or pelvic inflammation. Um, clinical indications, the HSG procedure may help diagnose functional or structural defects. A blockage to one or both uterine tubes may inhibit fertilization. The procedure may be therapeutic as the contrast may straighten a narrow, torturous, or occluded tube. Pathology, abnormal bleeding, pelvic pain, pelvic fullness are exhibited by patients. Lesions that are demonstrated may include endometrial poly polyps, uterine fibroids, uterine adhesions, as well as the diagnosis of pelvic masses, fistulas, habitual spontaneous abortions, and congenital defects. Your procedure, you want to gather supplies, pre-count must be completed, change the patient into a gown, um, everything from the room, uh, everything from the waist down, you'll have them supine on the table. The OB, uh, OB GYN doctor will take a clipboard, do the pause for a cause, consent the patient. The patient may lie supine at the end of the table with no footboard, have some chucks or towels under the patient's buttocks area, place the sheet over the legs, have extra um, towels ready for the OBGYN. Sometimes they need to elevate the buttocks um, to get to get in and, and see the cervix. I have a spotlight at the end of the table with the stool for the GYN. The OBGYN will need your assistance to set up the sterile tray when ready. Show the contrast, type of contrast, and expiration date. Pour the 20 into the 20 cc syringe or hold it so they can um, put the needle in to extract the contrast out. Pour betadine onto the 4x4 four four sponges that are in the little cup. When the OBGYN places the catheter, Call the radiologist to come in. They will fluoro the pelvis, mark the tower with a lead marker, right or left side. The OBGYN will inject while the radiologist fluoros. They will then take images. Once both doctors are satisfied, the test is complete. I help the patient sit up. The patient can have a vasovagal response um, to the procedure and may pass out. So make sure you are clear and that they are clear to go to the bathroom and leave. So um, they may ask for some images afterwards. No, it just depends on the department protocols. However, a usual scalp of the pelvic area would be a 10 by 12 inch um, area crosswise. The CR and IR are centered to a point two inches superior to the symphysis pubis. They may um, do a right or posterior oblique and a left posterior oblique to see the spillage or lack of spillage. Um, sometimes they'll ask for a post film as well, which will be the same as your scalp. The valve criteria will be the pelvic ring centered within the collimated field. Your cannula and or balloon catheter should be seen within the cervix. The pacified ure uterine cavity and uterine tubes are centered to the IR. Contrast medium is seen within the peritoneum in one or both tubes are patent, appropriate brightness and contrast, demonstrated anatomy, and contrast medium. Right and left marker should be visualized without superimposition over the anatomy. Some discharge instructions, patients may have some spotting, have a pad and some um, washcloth and wipes for them to clean up before leaving. Here are some great um, Things for you on the next slide. Here are the image of some of the supplies that you may need and that are labeled, as well as a image of a good example of the HSG and instructions of what to do in the eval criteria.